Okay, it's a Friday night. It's Memorial Day weekend, and I'm going to crack another beer here. I just had a, um, a 20, 21st Amendment IPA, and I'm going to open up a, a Hop Devil from Victory here from the beer fridge. I want to issue a correction from last week about the mountain biking. My younger brother's three and a half years younger me, not four. I like to be factual. Sometimes I make mistakes. So when I make a mistake, I'll correct them. But again, it's Memorial Day weekend, uh, 2021. Uh, the school year is drawing to a close. Today we had commencement. We had to do commencement twice because uh, of having to be indoors because of danger of rain plus the COVID protocols. It was interesting. Um, yeah, just uh, it was kind of like Groundhog Day, Groundhog Graduation Day, but it was good. And uh, kids did a great job, good speeches. Uh, principal did a good job. He's uh, got a motivational message. Do hard things, that was his word. And I believe that firmly. And that kind of actually ties into tonight's talk briefly. Mm, I always say briefly, it's not briefly at all, but we'll, we'll say briefly. By the way, this is the Soren Kierkegaard shirt that I had mentioned previously that I had worn up in Lake Placid that the uh, lacrosse players thought was a uh, rock band or something. So, do hard things. And how does that tie into beer and alcohol? Well, let me kind of start off. One of the, one of the really uh, pretty much proof positive ways of seeing if a person has problems with alcohol is do they drink alcohol in the morning? Um, if you are, if you're hitting the booze, uh, you're hitting the alcohol before noon, noon's still pretty early, um, but if you're hitting it first thing in the morning, you, you have a problem. I mean, you have a problem. That's all, that's all I'm saying is you have a problem with drinking alcohol. Even uh, drinking alcohol at noon is dangerous because chances are you're going to be up for a while unless you drink so much that you pass out. So the trajectory of drinking, if you start at 12 at noon, you know, two beers an hour, and if you're up till nine o'clock, you know, that's a lot of beers, that's 18 beers. Now, I weigh 270 pounds, so I'm not your average man. I'm six foot eight, 200, 270 pounds. I have a bit of a paunch on me, I'm not fat, but I, I, I carry extra weight in the midsection. I admit it, I could lose a little bit of weight. I'm in pretty good shape for being 57 years old, almost 58. A lot better than my peers, that's for sure, and a lot better than most younger people to be to be true and accurate. Ah, but there's something to kick my ass, and that's no problem. I'll admit that. Uh, and I, I generally stick to three beers. And now they're high alcohol beers generally. They're not they're not Coronas or Modellos or um, Natty Ice or whatever. Um, I suppose Natty Ice can have alcohol in it, but you know Keystone Light or whatever. The guys, it's, it's like corn chips. <laughs> People will drink 20 of them, and, and oh, it's Keystone Light. Well, it's not light anymore. You just had 20 of them. Uh, so I generally stick to three beers, and it's usually a reward. And when I talk about hard things, you know, do something to earn your beer, either mountain bike, workout, uh, you know, put a good day's work in. And I, I think even during the week, it's probably good to abstain because, you know, habituation is a dangerous thing. I was, I was reading a... A Facebook uh, group or a post from people of New York and the girl was talking about when she lost her mom you know she started to get into wine and she's just telling herself well, I'll just have one more glass you know and the problem is is at some point whatever you're looking for with the alcohol becomes less you drink more and you get less from it so there's a golden mean in there somewhere I don't know if Aristotle talked about alcohol but he did talk about a golden mean if I'm not mistaken so you know, a certain amount gets you to stasis. You feel the pleasure of alcohol. I think alcohol is a good consoler, but it's not a solver of problems. And it's often an accelerator of problems, depending on how, how much somebody drinks it. But it does provide consolation, you know. Um, and it's not bad. Jesus drank wine, so, you know, I always look at that as uh, pretty much proof positive that God's not against it. You know, and it's hard to ar argue otherwise. <clears throat> Let's tell that to you, fundies, or Islamic uh, radicals, or whatever. Uh, sure, there's abuse. Sure, there's abuse. That's that's not even a point. Like, don't. That doesn't. 
it's not worth trying to counter the abuse argument because that's obvious. <clears throat> so do hard things. Um, another sign is if you hit the hard stuff. Um, you know, you have appreciation for bourbon or whiskey or, you know, something like that. And that's sippable. But I think it was Dorothy Parker that said wine is fine, but liquor's quicker. You know, if you're looking to get hammered or people are looking to get hammered, hard, hard alcohol is a lot harder to deal with. You have to drink a lot of beer to get really, really, really messed up, especially if it's mainstream beer. You can do it, and people, plenty of people do. But another component of problem drinking is hitting the hard stuff because you can accelerate the intoxication, elevation, or degradation, uh, downward trajectory a lot quicker. So I have hard liquor in my house, and I like to have it. I like to have it around because every so often I like to drink it. But I'm also pretty careful with it. I don't, I don't mess with it a lot. I like having it. It doesn't mean I drink it all the time. But, you know, I like bourbon, and I like whiskey, um, but in small quantities. Um, but um, try to be really careful with it. I guess that's the way I would say it is that I feel better with beer. Like there's a certain amount of built-in. Uh, buffer with beer with a lot of water that you're hydrating, uh, you're drinking for taste, um, not guzzling, hopefully. And with bourbon, it's very, very easy to hit the uh, just um, you know, four or five shots in a glass, and pretty soon you're off to no man's land. And that's one of the issues with alcohol is that you get to about three or four beers within a certain range, and it's very, very easy to double down at that point because some of the rational faculties have, have been dissipated or are being lessened through, uh, through excessive con consumption. And that happens to drunk drivers. Most drunk drivers don't think they're driving poorly. They just ran over a mailbox, and they, maybe they finally come to a realization that they're wasted. Um, there's a local principal in central Pennsylvania that got busted for going like 85 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour, 55 mile an hour zone. It was sometime within a year ago. Um, you know, got a DUI, busted, blah, blah, blah. And then he got busted again for like running into a pole. See, that's, that's dangerous behavior because it's accelerating. Like, not, this time you weren't just speeding, now you ran into something. You know, like, if the dude doesn't know he has a problem, he does. Like, that's a danger sign. Uh, you missed the sign before. You had a DUI. You were going 85 miles an hour in a 65 mile over zone. You got busted by a cop. And now you've run over a freaking pole and you busted your car. And now you're probably in trouble with your job. So... You know, we can't miss the lessons, but one sign, drinking early. If you're drinking early in the morning, you got a problem. Okay, number two, if you're hitting the hard stuff, you have a problem. All right, those are some proof positive things. If you go beyond, like, three drinks, you probably have a problem. And that doesn't mean you're an alcoholic, but you could become one. Now, I do make exceptions occasionally. You know, holiday weekends, uh, you know, hanging out with the family. Those are not normal occurrences, so I'll crack a beer sometimes early. Not before noon usually, but you know, who knows. Uh, but that's, that's once in a while. That's not a pattern of behavior. So take it for what it's worth. I'm a person that um, I think I've developed some discipline with alcohol. I think I've had problems with alcohol. I don't think I've ever been an alcoholic, though. I would say that there's been some problem drinking in my past for sure. Uh, there was times I totally abstained. When I became a Christian, I don't think I drank for two or three years, and that was fine. I needed to do that because I had some bad patterns that I needed to change. Um, and since then, uh, since being a Christian, I can't always claim that I've been above uh, above uh, the right practice. You know, I, um, I've, I've made mistakes. Another another sign is if you wake up and feel like crap in the morning, you've probably had too much. Now, the problem is with people that are problem drinkers on their way to becoming alcoholics is that that may no longer stop a person. They, they don't feel good a lot, or maybe their body is so uh, used to it, they don't like it with hangovers anymore. They're, they're just in a general depressed state. So the problem is is that... You know, the, uh, the hangover, the person's just drinking right through that warning sign. And it's not even seen as a problem anymore. So, just some things to consider.